One day, the quartermaster approached with news to report. Alas, bad news. Your Grace, our food stocks have near run out. And about villages, folk have naught to spare, not even to trade. The Queen dispatched small groups of scouts. They were to scour the countryside for hunting camps, beekeepers, charcoal burners, any souls willing to trade food for coin or goods. The first scouts came back around dusk. The last three detachments returned not at all. At first, Meave suspected they'd fallen prey to monsters, the beastly or Nilfgaardian kind. Later, she learned the men had left naught of their belongings behind. She'd been soft-hearted toward deserters. This lot decided they, too, would give it a try. That night, Meave lay still but sleepless. Beneath thin covers, she was cold, hungry, irate. Towering alders grow thick in his gift, their crowns weaving an expansive canopy that obscures the sky. Any sunbeams to slip through this twisted thicket scatter in the milky mist below. Thus the marsh abides in a state of perpetual twilight, wherein a sense of time and direction are easily lost. As the force moved along, a glow appeared in the trees. The Lyrians squinted, their mouths agape in wonder. An orb hung over the water, pulsating, humming. It circled the soldiers, darted off a distance, then hovered as if waiting. A will of the wisp, that is, whispered one of the footmen. I believe it's keen to show us something. Neve knew the wisp could prove treacherous, lead them into a trap. Nonetheless, she followed, though not entirely certain why. Her soldiers seemed eager. She sensed they approved. Yet she was also simply curious. We follow it. Carefully. Weapons at the ready. As you command. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? I smell a leak.
don't need no weapon! serves a purpose. If not a pot turned over. Margarita told us of this. You sure about that?
You're serious? Prepare to fight, if you've any honor. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. Got a death wish? As the Wisp led the Lyrians down a narrow, winding path, Meave surveyed her surroundings warily. Beads of sweat emerged upon her brow, but her fears in the end proved unfounded, for at the path's end, the troops found what appeared to be a caravan's remains. Its wagons, rot-eaten, half-buried in the bog, had sat there for decades, perhaps longer. Despite this, gilded panels and scraps of silver-threaded fabric showed they'd once been rather ornate. Inside the wagons, the soldiers discovered many steel crates. Rust-covered but intact, they contained truly dazzling treasures. Sacks bulging with gold coin, pearl-encrusted goblets, exotic velvets and silks in beads. Blimey, the sheer amount. In here of all places. A footman muttered under his breath. Meave quickly pieced it all together. She too had once ridden in such a caravan, splendid and laden with gold, when she'd left her home to marry. The rest of the story was not difficult to divine. This was a maiden's dowry. She and her retinue lost their way. Isgith proved their grave, unbeknownst to any other. The wisp circled Meave's party, blinked several times, then faded into thin air. The troops resumed their march, and all seemed in order. Seemed, for soon several footmen were discovered to be gone. Greed had been their ruin. They'd grabbed too much. The loot had weighed them down, and the marsh had embraced them.
In evading Nilfgaard's banners, Meave led her force into Angren's wildest reaches. The foe could not attack the Lyrians there.